We have terrorism against the United States, Europe, or our allies until we fully understand how to end these threats. And by the way, we have no choice. She wants to take away Americans' guns and then admit the very people who want to slaughter us. Let them come into the country. We don't have guns. Let them come in. Let them have all the fun they want. So, Hugh Hewitt, uh, what does that uh, measure on the Hugh Hewitt uh, hyperbolic index? Well, he's talking about Syria, Libya, and I assume the refugee camps of Europe where people have passed through the new ISIS colony of Libya created by Hillary Clinton to uh, congregate in, in Italy and Greece or move further into Europe. And he's talking about not bringing them to the United States. And I believe resonate with the American people unless and until there are ways of vetting people. I, I do believe there are lots of Syrians who could come here if they are properly vetted, if we know where they are. But there is a realistic problem when, this, when the infrastructure of Syria is destroyed. Uh, when Libya is simply a series of uh, ISIS outposts, it's very hard to accept refugees without having some kind of danger come with them. But Brian, I don't know if the control room has it. The heart attack inducing portion of the speech for the left is when Donald Trump sat down and said, uh, I'm going to consult with the National Rifle Association on policies that will keep us safe. Well, that that's going to cause strokes across the United States. But it does lay open the difference between the Republican approach to international security and domestic security and the Democratic support. And And yesterday, Immediately, people wanted to start talking about gun control. The first thing you need to do is, who is this guy? Where did this killer come from? How was he radicalized? Was it online, as people expect? Are there radical imams involved in Florida or abroad? And then come up with your solution. The solution before the facts makes no sense whatsoever. And I saw earlier your interview with Diane Feinstein. I thought it was very good. And then I posed the question to Del Wilbur. Del, if, uh, who's a... LA Times Justice Department correspondent knows the issue very well. If Senator Feinstein's proposed bill that she basically read to you, Brian, had been adopted, would the killer have still been able to get his guns? Because he was on the watch list, then he was taken off of the watch list. I'm not sure, but I believe he bought his guns after he went off the watch list. So Senator Feinstein's bill that she spent all of her time talking to you about would have had no impact on stopping this atrocity. Well, so I, <laughs> that to me is what Trump's getting at. To the other questions you just posed, who is this guy? Where is he from? Uh, we, we kind of have our answers on that. He's from not far from the Trump family home, Queens, New York, moves to Florida. Yesterday, one of our described him as a losery guy, a, uh, a security guard with aspirations to someday become a cop. Self-radicalized, uh, reasonable people can disagree. It may be a grandiose term for what happened to this guy who uh, was perhaps looking for an influence, looking to make a name for himself, uh, grabbed his influences from different strands of orthodoxy and uh, sadly we know the rest but I think what so many people are complaining about former member of the watch list they were worried enough about him to insert into his life for 10 months and put an undercover guy on him that thread was lost he goes to buy two formidable weapons and there's no connective tissue and, and it's interesting where was he from we're all from different places now, not merely geographical. You're kind enough always to reference, I'm from Northeastern Ohio, and, and I wear my Ohio flag proudly, and I'll root for the Cavs tonight and the Browns and the Indians. But I'm also from every Twitter account I visit. I'm also from every website that I spend time on. I'm from MSNBC now. I'm from the Salem Radio Network. I'm from the places that I return to daily intellectually and with focus. What we need to know about jihadis is where do they live online? And where they often live online is explained by, as I said, Daniel Silva in The Black Widow or Joby Warwick in Black Flags or, or, or Michael Weiss in, uh, in his book, The Rise of ISIS. We all live online. Our new countries and our, and our new towns and our new states are places that don't exist except on the keyboard. We need to find out where this individual lived online and connect those dots. And what Senator Feinstein, and I followed her the last time I was on talking about this, I think she's got to get modern. She's got to realize that a watch list presents serious due process problems to people who end up on it for no apparent reason. And it doesn't work if you take known jihadis off the watch list. And I'm not blaming the FBI. They're professional. I worked with them when I was at Justice. You can't keep everybody on a watch list. 
but her bill would not have stopped this massacre. That's my conclusion right now. And so people with solutions that look at guns are ignoring the solution that is ISIS that nested under President Obama and Secretary Clinton's watch. The red line that was not enforced in Syria, the Libyan intervention that was not backed up by plans, the destructive wave of radical Islam that is rolling across Europe. I think Donald Trump nailed that today. And it was not bigoted. It was not uh, outside of the margins of acceptable discourse. In fact, it will define the difference between Hillary and Donald if Donald stays on that. And I hope he does. Uh, Hugh Hewitt has always been a formidable representative of his viewpoint. It's why he does have a radio network, and uh, we're happy to have him here. Reasonable people can disagree. At the end of the day, of course, we've got a, a terrible tragedy we're covering. We do. Hugh, uh, thank you very much for coming on with us. The view from the other side of the aisle, on the other side.